On May 31, 1995, a one-third kiloton nuclear device that had been left sealed in a tunnel for more than three and a half years was destroyed by a 30 kilogram chemical explosive charge. This event, which occurred in tunnel 108K underneath Degelin Mountain on the Semipalatinsk test site in eastern Kazakhstan, completed the nuclear testing history of the Soviet's most secretive test site in which some 200 nuclear tests were detonated over a span of 35 years. Degelin Mountain, located in eastern Kazakhstan near the city of Semipalatinsk, was the Soviet's most used nuclear test site. In 181 tunnels driven horizontally into its many ridges, 207 nuclear tests were conducted, almost twice the number of tests at any other Soviet underground nuclear test site. It was also the site of the first Soviet underground nuclear test, a one kiloton device detonated on October 11th, 1961. Until recently, the details of testing at Degelin were kept secret and have been the subject of considerable speculation in the U.S. national security community. However, in 1991, the Semipalatinsk test site became part of the newly independent Republic of Kazakhstan, and in 1995, the Kazakhstani government concluded an agreement with the U.S. Department of Defense to eliminate the nuclear testing infrastructure there. This agreement calls for the demilitarization of the infrastructure directly associated with the nuclear weapons test tunnels at Degelin Mountain Complex which has been implemented by the Defense Special Weapons Agency as the Degelin Mountain Tunnel Closure Program. This effort, which is funded through the congressionally mandated Cooperative Threat Reduction Program, is designed to irreversibly reduce the ability of Kazakhstan to resume nuclear testing by destroying the nuclear testing infrastructure at the mountain. This includes the closure and sealing of 181 weapons test tunnels at up to 200 tunnel portals. The Defense Special Weapons Agency is responsible for analyzing and disseminating information on nuclear testing effects, including the impact of nuclear testing at the former nuclear test sites. As a result of DSWA's ground survey of the Semipalatinsk test site in 1994, the U.S. Department of Defense designated DSWA as the executing agent for the Degelin Mountain Tunnel Neutralization Program. The government of Kazakhstan named the National Nuclear Center of Kazakhstan as that country's executive agent for all nuclear weapons infrastructure elimination programs at the former Semipalatinsk test sites, including the Degelin Mountain Tunnel Neutralization Program. Nuclear tests at Degelin were conducted in long tunnels driven horizontally deep into the mountain flanks. The mountain is composed mostly of granite or a dense rhyolite and tunnels were excavated by drilling and blasting the rock. Instrumentation was placed both inside and external to the tunnel entrance, and many tests involved the conduit of radiation down and out of the tunnels. To achieve maximum depth, the nuclear devices, shown in this archival Soviet footage, were emplaced beneath topographic ridges and detonated. Of the 207 nuclear tests detonated in 163 tunnels at Degelin, 59 were salvo-fired multiple device tests using two to five nuclear devices detonated within five seconds. Yields ranged from 125 kilotons to less than one kiloton. Many Degelin nuclear tests were radiation effects tests. This is confirmed by both official Soviet documents from their testing program, by statements made by Russian nuclear scientists, as well as by comparison with the U.S. tunnel testing program. Most of the tunnels are being closed by a combination of three means. First, blasting down a section of the tunnel near the tunnel portal. Second, filling the remaining tunnel section up to the portal with concrete. And third, covering the portal entrance with soil and rock materials known as backfilling. The portions of the mountain used for nuclear testing are composed primarily of either a granite or a dense quartz porphyrite, which may also be described as rhyolite. This rock is quite different from most of the rocks in which U.S. underground tests were conducted. It is dense and of low porosity, and in places it is heavily fractured. These characteristics posed special challenges for the Soviets in terms of nuclear test containment, 
and recent radiological studies indicate that there were significant radiation contamination issues as a result of a number of the Degelin nuclear tests. To close tunnels constructed in such hard rock, it is necessary to use explosives to collapse a portion of the tunnel just inside the line section near the tunnel entrance or portal. However, the rocks pose no particular problems for engineering such a tunnel collapse, except in those tunnels which are wet. While the innermost portion of the tunnels are bare rock, unlined and unsupported, the portion of the tunnel near the portal is supported in various ways depending on when the tunnel was constructed and the stability of the rock massif. This may include only support timbers or the tunnel may be completely lined either with steel or concrete. Steel supports may be arches or beams and these supports may hold up a timber, concrete or metal liner. Further inside the tunnel the rock may be supported by bolts this type of support plays a major factor in determining the tunnel closure method. In addition, many of the Degelin tunnels contain significant amounts of water and in the winter months, ice. A major part of the tunnel characterization effort is to evaluate the hydrology of the mountain, determining local groundwater flow. This is paralleled by extensive water monitoring activities, including radiation testing of water in the tunnels. For the wet tunnels, this includes monthly measurements of temperature and tunnel water discharge. These wet tunnels pose a particular challenge to the tunnel closure effort, and most will be closed in the final stages of the program. For each tunnel, the Degelin Mining Enterprise prepares a proposed tunnel closure plan. These plans indicate the tunnel sections that will be collapsed and the portion to be sealed with concrete. These are reviewed by DSWA and its technical team including geologists, hydrologists, engineers, and explosives experts. The National Nuclear Center of Kazakhstan, as the custodian of the Semipalatin test site, is responsible for the radiological and geological characterization of each tunnel. The Degelin Mining Enterprise is responsible for preparing a recommendation for the tunnel closure design. Throughout the work season, generally from April through December, DSWA maintains an on-site technical management team to oversee the progress and safety of the closure operation. In February 1996, DSWA contracted with the National Nuclear Center to provide a tunnel closure demonstration at one of the Deglin Mountain Tunnels. The tunnel chosen was number 192, which is located near the center of the mountain. This tunnel was the site of two relatively small nuclear tests, in October of 1975 and November 1979. The tunnel was lined with steel and was in relatively good condition. The tunnel would be collapsed by a series of explosions and the portal covered with soil and rock materials. The American and Kazakhstani teams spent considerable time developing and discussing plans for this first prototype tunnel closure demonstration. This included long hours spent inside the tunnel examining the rock and man-made structures and planning the details of the coming mining and engineering effort. Explosives were in place by drilling into the rock ceiling and walls of the tunnel and then loading the emplacement holes with cartridges of chemical explosives. All of the drilling and blasting work in the tunnels is done by the Degelin Mining Enterprise, the same personnel who constructed the tunnels. On the day of the tunnel collapse demonstration, the American and Kazakhstani teams, including the U.S. Ambassador Elizabeth Jones, Major General Roland LaJoy, retired of the Office of the Secretary of Defense, and the DSWA program manager, watched as the explosives were detonated, throwing up small amounts of rock and soil dust from outside the tunnel entrance. The collapsed tunnel was later backfilled by bulldozer, covering the portal itself and removing all traces of the nuclear test history that lies buried and sealed within the rock. In comparison with the U.S. tunnel testing program, there are several features of nuclear testing at Deglin that deserve special mention. First among these is tunnel engineering. The Soviets usually constructed a separate tunnel for each nuclear test, so that for over 200 nuclear tests, 181 tunnels were excavated. Some tunnels were used more than once by placing the subsequent nuclear device or devices between the zero room used for the first test and the tunnel portal. 
This contrasts sharply with tunnel testing in the U.S., where dozens of nuclear tests were usually conducted in a single tunnel complex. Shown here is a map of two tunnel complexes beneath Rainier Mesa at the Nevada test site. These are composed of a single principal tunnel access portal and numerous side drifts, each constructed and sealed for a separate nuclear test. Second, the Soviets frequently conducted nuclear tests as multiple explosions, either as a salvo of explosions in the same tunnel or as near simultaneous explosions in multiple tunnels. This formerly secret information comes from documents received by DSWA as part of a project called the History of Nuclear Testing in the USSR, under which the Russians prepared a detailed summary of their nuclear testing program. Third, it is clear from inspection of both the Deglin tunnel interiors and structures that are left outside of the tunnel portals that the Soviets conducted many tests in which radiation experiments were conducted outside of the tunnel. These so-called beam-out-of-the-mountain tests involve directing radiation beams to interact with equipment set up on structures built outside of the tunnel portal. Other structures, such as the columnators shown here, were used to direct or focus the radiation beam. These structures are noted and described on the tunnel closure proposals received by DSWA during the planning stages of the tunnel closure program. While many similar radiation effects experiments were also done by U.S. at the Nevada test site, the U.S. made such experiments underground to minimize the possibility of radioactive material leakage into the atmosphere. Finally, the Soviets buried many of their tests at a lower scale depth than the U.S. While this has been known since the publication of some Deglin test yields by Bocharov and others in 1989, it is quite evident to those working on the mountain that some of the Deglin tests produced spectacular surface effects, including massive landslides and in one case, a large crater. In a few cases, such as the one shown here, the rock avalanche that accompanied the test buried the tunnel portal. These pose a challenge to Team Deglin, which must decide how best to handle the closure of tunnels that they know exist, but to which they have limited access. In the year since the tunnel closure demonstration, 59 tunnels were closed, sealed, and covered. Plans for 1997 include the closure of an additional 64 tunnels, and the tunnel closure program is expected to be completed by September 1999. A second effort is now underway at the nearby Balapa nuclear test field. At that site, nuclear tests were emplaced in deep vertical boreholes. Thirteen of these nuclear test emplacement boreholes remain unused, and these holes will be closed and sealed by the end of 1998. The Degelin Mountain Tunnel Closure Program contributes to U.S. national security and to the goals of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty by eliminating nuclear testing infrastructure. This program is also a hallmark in U.S.-Kazakhstani cooperation. It is worth noting that the closure of the first set of 58 tunnels was completed within an eight-month period, three weeks ahead of schedule. <laughs>